Hello there. So I'm sure all of you have only one question in mind. We know all the regulations now for red zone and green zone and orange zone, but all through the day, a bunch of people have been calling and asking and trying to figure out, hey, what exactly does this mean in my area? Is the liquor shop open? Is the liquor shop not open? Am I allowed to do this or not do this? Frankly, the answer to a lot of that is it depends because state by state, area by area, decisions are going to be different and frankly with that much power it's also going to happen that sometimes it's your local police person who gets to decide whether what you're doing is a permitted activity or not a permitted activity so there is going to be a certain amount of uncertainty but that's just the way it is going to be I'm afraid for the next two weeks however a broad set of guidelines are available and we've been sharing them with you and we will repeat that for you in just a couple of, of minutes what is however clearer is where the red, green and orange zones really are. But even there, because we're all locked in, sometimes it's not quite that simple to get a slightly bigger picture. So we're going to do that for you right now. Let's just try and go state by state. Parakar has been putting together some really fantastic visualizations of all the data that's coming in. And I, and I got his permission to show some of, these, some of these graphics to you. Let's look at some of the worst affected states, right? Let's start with, start with Maharashtra. Now this is Maharashtra. As you can see, more than 7,000 cases in Mumbai alone. Mumbai, by far the biggest hotspot when it comes to COVID in India. Uh, nearly, what's it, about 30%, maybe 25 to 30% of all cases are just in Mumbai. In Maharashtra, though there are other red zones, largely in the urban areas, if you see going, going down towards, uh, towards Pune, that entire belt, or going then towards Nashik and Jalgaon, uh, Aurangabad. So those are the other red zone areas when it comes to uh, the, the state of, of, Madhya, of Maharashtra. Moving to Madhya Pradesh, if you can take a look at that, it's the western and the, and the southwestern corner of Madhya Pradesh which is really affected. Indore and the areas around it, whether it's Ujjain or Devas or Khandwa, Dhar, Bharwani, those are the other red zone areas and a little bit of Bhopal of course which also has something like like 500 cases. The eastern part of Madhya Pradesh is green as of course and if you keep going going east into Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh those areas are largely green as well. So that's that's the situation when it comes to Madhya Pradesh. Let's turn our attention to Gujarat uh, very briefly and in Gujarat you can see that it is Ahmedabad. That's another massive hotspot. Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Delhi. Those are the three big, big hotspots in the country. But then also all these urban areas. Vadodara, if you can see, uh, Bhavnagar has got a few cases. That's a red zone. Surat, 640 cases there in Surat. So these are the areas uh, in, in Gujarat that are, that are really affected. Uh, some parts of Swarashtra actually do fall into the green area. If I could turn our attention to Uttar Pradesh a little bit, you can see very clearly that it's a western part of, U of UP. Somehow, everywhere that seems to be the case, western parts of various areas seem to be more affected than eastern areas. In Uttar Pradesh, again, this entire belt is virtually a red zone, as you can see all across western UP with this. Mathura, Aligarh, Agra, of course, 497 cases, very badly affected, Muradabad. And towards the east, it becomes largely, largely uh, uh, green. I'll keep taking you through other states later on. Uh, maybe tomorrow as well but West Bengal is one final state I just want to take a look at because here there's a lot of discrepancy here there's a lot of data arguments that are taking place between the center and the state the state seems to be saying why are all of these red zones actually there are not that many cases out here the center doesn't seem to be completely believing the data that's coming out of West Bengal all right so those are just some of the big areas and some of the states that help you decipher what's red and what's not Here's a look at the big stories. A day after India extended the lockdown for the third time, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday held a series of meetings with key ministers including Home Minister Amit Shah and Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Reports quoting sources said the meeting were to firm up the second stimulus package for sectors impacted by lockdown to curb the spread of coronavirus. After meetings with Shah and Sitaraman, the Prime Minister would have follow-up meetings with ministers of key economic ministries such as micro, small and medium enterprises, a News 18 report said. Over 
are 190 Pakistanis who are stranded in India due to the lockdown have been allowed to exit the country through the Atari Wagao crossing next week. The Hindustan Times reported that the External Affairs Ministry has told state police chiefs to facilitate their travel. The Pakistani nationals have been told to reach the Atari Wagao border by early Tuesday when formalities for their return would begin at the immigration and border checkpoint. The Pakistani nationals are currently residing in 25 districts of India in 10 states. Union Minister Prakash Javadekar on Saturday said that he thinks the worst is over as far as COVID-19 outbreak is concerned. He, however, added that till the time the disease is not completely contained, we should continue to follow all precautions and guidelines. Living with COVID is the new normal, the Union Minister mentioned. His comments came as India recorded the biggest jump of 2,293 coronavirus cases in 24 hours. The vaccine is not out of तब तक ये सवाल रहेगा कि हमें कोविड के साथ ही जीना पड़ेगा एक तरह से और ये न्यू नॉर्मल है और इसलिए जैसे मास्क लगाना बारी-बारी से हाथ धोना 6 फुट की दूरी 2 गज की दूरी बहुत जरूरी ये प्रधानमंत्री का संदेश का अमल करना ये मुझे लगता है ये न्यू नॉर्मल है 44 people residing in a building near Delhi's Kapas Heda have tested positive for coronavirus on Saturday, officials said. The residents had undergone tests nearly 10 days ago, they added. The residents were believed to have contracted the virus from a COVID-19 patient who tested positive on April 18th. Authorities had then sealed the area and collected samples of 175 people from this locality. Seven daily wage labourers in Uttar Pradesh who recently returned from Maharashtra have tested positive for COVID-19, NDTV has reported. The labourers in eastern UP's Basti district were quarantined at a college after their return earlier this week. They have now been shifted to a local hospital. The quarantine centre is being sanitised. All those who came in contact with these patients are being traced and isolated according to the officials. This is reportedly the biggest cluster in the state of migrants who have tested positive for coronavirus after returning to UP. Desperate times result in desperate measures. 18 people were found travelling in the mixer tank of a concrete mixer in Madhya Pradesh's Indore. In a video shared by news agency ANI, migrant workers can be seen coming out of a small opening in the mixer after it was stopped by the police. The workers were reportedly travelling from Maharashtra to Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh. FIR has been registered against them. Under a new directive issued on Friday, the government has made the Arokya Setu app mandatory to download for all offices in both the public and the private sector. Employees across all these offices will be compulsorily required to download the app as the government looks to impose stricter contact tracing and surveillance to restrict the spread of the pandemic. Individuals living in all of the identified COVID-19 containment zones in India will also need to download the Arogya Setu app mandatorily. The move comes despite several complaints of privacy breach and surveillance concerns raised by experts and citizens. The World Health Organization has praised China for its handling of the coronavirus pandemic and said that other countries need to learn from Wuhan on how the epicenter of the virus was bringing the society back to normal. The comment comes a day after US President Donald Trump likened the global health body to a public relations agency for Beijing. The Trump administration has launched a probe into the role of the WHO on coronavirus and has temporarily suspended the US's financial assistance to it. In a major relief for professionals and immigrants from countries like India, the US government has given a grace period of 60 days to H-1B visa holders and green card applicants. The immigrants were served notices for submission of various documents, taking into account the massive novel coronavirus outbreak in America. A London-based digital art investment platform, ArtCells, is hosting a virtual exhibition featuring some of the best-known contemporary artists including Banksy, Cos and Jeff Koons. The exhibition begins on the 4th of May and will run till the 18th of May on its website. Title 21 the exhibition will showcase works in a high-definition 3D format to give a real-life experience to viewers and is free and open to all. The interesting feature is that you also get a chance to invest in the art portfolio and buy shares of artworks for low prices.